What's up y'all? Thanks for tuning in to part 2 of the 72 volt 2000 watt full hydraulic electric XP 3.0 build. Let's continue. Loosen the axle nuts of the front wheel. Remove the axle nuts and washers. Place them aside. Remove the rotor with a T25 Torx bit. Rotor spacers will be necessary to prevent the new caliper from hitting the front wheel spokes. The entire amount of this 8 count pack was used for this part. Stack and align the spacers, then pre-install one screw into the rotor upside down. Insert the second screw diagonally across from the first screw to align the spacers with the rotor and wheel. Insert the rest of the screws, then tighten and torque them down to 4 newton meters. Untighten and remove the stock brake caliper brackets. Pull the brake cable out of these hooks. Insert the new hydraulic caliper inside the fender and screw the bracket onto the fork mount. Insert the new hydraulic line into the hooks. Torque down the mounting bolts to 8 newton meters. Remove the brake pad spacer. Untighten and remove the rear caliper bracket. Install the new hydraulic caliper and torque down the mounting bolts to 8 newton meters. Remove the brake pad spacers. Clean the rotors with alcohol. Insert two washers on the rotor side of the front axle. Fit the front wheel into the dropouts and the rotor into the caliper. Insert the tab washers and axle nuts. Tighten to 35 newton meters. Install axle nut covers. Insert one washer on each side of the rear axle and fit the wheel into the rear dropouts. Facing the motor cable downward, or upward in this case, will help prevent water from penetrating the motor, while facing the cable forward will create less of a bend when we tie the cable to the frame. Insert a tab washer on each side of the axle. The rotor side will need an additional washer to space out the torque arm. The Electric XP 3.0 frame is made out of aluminum alloy and aluminum dropouts are known for breaking under high torque. To be on the safe side, here is how torque arms were added on both sides of the rear axle. Take note that the drive side torque arms are stacked differently than the rotor side. Tighten the axle nuts to 35 newton meters. The new brake calipers can now be tightened and torqued to 8 newton meters. Clip the zip ties holding the stock brake cable to the frame. A pass sensor is optional on this setup because ghost pedaling is felt almost immediately on this bike. Use a hot glue gun to stick the metal ring to the bottom bracket. Slide the pass sensor magnet onto the crank axle. That'll wrap up part 2 for now. Thanks for being patient and I'll catch you all in part 3.